The clock should first be put in beat or in balance. One of the many ways what we do that is, is you can do it by ear, by just listening. Back before we had electronics and electricity, that's the way the clockmakers did, did it back then. They would listen carefully to the clock and listen to uh, the ticking. And by in beat, what we are talking about is the movement is said to be in beat when the time between the ticks is equal, giving a steady, even beat. Uh, but now because of new technology we have things like beat amplifiers like this is a beat amplifier and we also have what's called a time tracks machine uh, this is a clock timing machine now these will run you probably about hundred sixty dollars on up but they're a very useful machine we're not going to demonstrate that because that's more of an advanced item and more of your uh, beginning to intermediate clock enthusiasts uh, will, would not typically have this in their uh, repertoire hook up the sensor clip to the winding arbor. So I'll open up the front of the clock and hook up the clip onto the winding arbor here. All right, and I'll turn it on. And we can hear the amplified beat. Now remember what we're looking for is the time between ticks is equal, giving a steady even beat. Now, after you hear enough movements and hear enough clocks, you, you tend to develop an ear for what sounds right and what doesn't sound right. And this is, not, is an example of a, of a beat that is not steady and even. Now, in order to make it even and improve the beat, what we would need to do is to adjust the crutch right here which is moving along with the pendulum. Now by t turning the, cr cr the crutch, either inward or outward, bending it, will change the beat. Because it, what it does is it affects the way the escapement is how it's contacting the escape teeth on the escape wheel. Now there's a couple ways we can bend that crutch and you can use a, a homemade tool uh, that looks like this. Now what this is is a screwdriver and this is what it looked like before and all I did was cut out this center section here. So what I do that hooks onto the wire of the crutch like this and by twisting the screwdriver one way or the other I can bend the crutch in order to adjust the beat. Now let's l listen to that beat again. Now one way to see which way to bend the crutch is to lift the movement or lift the clock up to the right or to the left until you hear the beat improve. So first we'll move it to the right and see if the beat improves. No, it's not improving. In fact, it's, it's stopping, so we're going the wrong direction. So let's move it to the left. Now, to me, that sounds like we're getting a more even and equal, steady, even beat. Okay, now what that tells me, because we had to lean it to the right, is that we have to bend the crutch we had to lean it to the left, we had to bend the crutch to the right, the opposite. So what I do is I usually hold the top of the crutch with my fingers, tips, like, like this, or you can use a long needle nose pliers to hold, it, to hold it steady, to grip it, and twist just a little bit. See, I'm turning it counterclockwise to bend it to the right. Just give it a little bend, and now we'll test it and see how it sounds. Still doesn't sound quite right. We may have to bend it more, let's see. Okay, we may have overbent it, so I've got to move it back a little bit. Let's try that. 
that sounds better. Now the clock sounds like it's in beat, and so that takes care of that. Now the next thing we need to talk about is regulating the movement. 